Hi everyone, welcome back to my video series on SAP HANA Spatial. This time we're going to get our hands dirty and do some spatial data handling in SQL on SAP HANA. The easiest entry point to do that is to get a trial instance of SAP HANA Cloud. If you want to get your instance, you just go to sapihanajourney.com and follow the prominent buttons uh, for the trial edition. So click try for free and then SAP HANA Cloud try for free. After a couple of minutes, you receive your instance. Uh, I have done that already. You see here in my cloud platform account, the trial instance with 30 gigabyte of memory, which is enough for our demo today. The good news is the spatial engine of HANA just comes out of the box. There's really nothing that you need to install. There's nothing that you need to configure. Once you got your instance ready, you can just go ahead and use spatial data on the SQL script layer. I will set up that trial instance in my database management studio. For that, I'm copying over the endpoint, um, switching in this case to dbeaver, which is an open source database client. Um, the reason why I'm using dbeaver is that it really combines an SQL script console with built-in spatial visualizations. So it's the easiest thing that I can use for the demo to show you on the one hand the SQL script and on the other hand also the location of the different geometries we're dealing with. So to set up my connection, I click the plus button here. I'm choosing HANA as my database, clicking next. As a host, I'm inserting my endpoint. Uh, just have to make sure because there's the port at the end that I remove the port 443 and uh, move it to the port field 443. Um, for the driver properties, HANA Cloud um, requires encryption. So I have to set the encryption parameter to true. Now I can go back insert my trial user, which I have created before, inserting my password, which I won't share, of course, and test the connection, see if it works. Whew. That worked out well. So clicking on Finish. And now I got my trial instance here in the database studio. Um, next thing that I want to do is just open a SQL console. And what's the easiest thing that we can do? Maybe we can create a table having a geospatial column. So for that, I'm issuing create table. Let's call it my geom. Uh, I'm going to give it an ID, just integer value, maybe a name. So it's a, let's say it's a string of length 20. And now the important part, I'm going to add one column, which I call shape. And the type of that column is st underscore geometry. Fine, that's my geometry column. Now, with each geometry column, I have an associated spatial reference system. So I have to tell the database how the coordinates in that column are interpreted. If you remember, I mentioned that in a video before when we were talking about spatial data, we always have that spatial reference system. And each spatial reference system has an identifier, which you just can look up online. So that is something that is always associated with the SRS. Uh, let's take, for example, latitude and longitude. So that's 4326. Good. So that's the statement. Running that statement. And now I got my presumably empty table. Let's just do a select star on the table to see if it works. Um, and you see I got an empty table um, having ID, name, and a shape. Good. Now let's insert something to the table. Um, insert into my geom. ID, name, shape, values, let's say one, test. Now we need to enter geometry. Let's take now. Now it always works, right? Cool. So they worked out. And here we got the result. And uh, you see there is a null in the spatial column. And of course, null is not re representing a geometry. So let's do something more spatial, maybe and insert another value. Let's see. Now, if we ins if we need to insert a proper geometry, the question is, how do we do that? Um, the easiest way is actually to use the format of well-known text. Well-known text is a text format just uh, defined by the Open Geospatial Consortium, uh, which you can use for exchanging geometries. To actually import a well-known text into the database, we offer the function st geom from text. And you have two parameters to hand over to that function. One is the well-known text representation. I'm choosing point empty here because point empty is a defined representation of an empty point. And I'm going to tell the database that this has the spatial reference system 4326. So that's the second parameter I'm giving. 
Let's try that. Good, that worked. So you see that the database actually interpreted my point empty and converted it to a multi-point empty, which is fine because it's essentially another representation just to say, look, this is an empty geometry. And again, of course, this is not associated to any place on Earth, so the map is not showing anything, which is boring. Um, let's maybe try to insert something more meaningful into the table, something which we actually can see on a map because that's why we're here for, right? Um, so now I need to get the well-known texture as a representation of a certain point. Um, to do that, in the case of Geospatial Reference System 4326, I can simply take the latitude and longitude and get it to a well-known text. Actually, there's some nice little pages online, like this one, uh, it's Wicked, it's a small JavaScript library, uh, which actually where you could just draw on a map and you get the uh, well-known text of exactly that polygon. So for example, here, you got a multi-polygon drawn on the map and here's the representation. So let's clear that map. Um, maybe look, let's look at the SAP headquarter, right? That's a good example. And for the SAP headquarter, which is, uh, I'm confused, there it is, Waldorf between Waldorf, St. Leon, Roth. Um, let's maybe pick the big canteen here. So it's building 20. Um, it's, I think it's the largest canteen of the headquarter. And just place a point here. You see here on the right side, the well-known text re representation. So I'm copying that over and inserting it into my table. Good. Execute that statement. That worked well. That's again, just select the content of the table. And we're seeing now here, I got the null value, I got the empty point. And now I got the point that I just inserted. If I click on that, I exactly see the point on the map. So the database stored that point and the database management studio, which has a spatial feature built in, actually can interpret that point and maps it to the right position. Cool. So that was a point. Uh, let's try something more. Let's maybe try to get a polygon. Uh, for that, I'm maybe going to the other other corner of the campus. So here's building eight. Um, so let's just draw a polygon around building eight. Uh, let's see how good I am with drawing polygons. Uh, just approximately, so it won't be exact, right? Good. So that's more or less building eight. Cool, so I got the polygon well-known text representation here. As you can see, of course, this is a bit longer since it uh, actually has latitude and longitude for all the corners that are just inserted. So let's copy that over. Right, let's wait. Uh, first we copy the insert statement. Then I'm copying the well-known text. Inserting it here and just issuing that statement. Good. So we're selecting it again. I'm going here to the spatial tab to just see all the geometries on the map. You see, I got the point here that I inserted before, and I got the polygon here of building eight, which I have just drawn. Good. So one thing that you may want to do is, for example, transform those geometries into a different spatial reference system. Maybe to enable more performant computations, you want to use a planar spatial reference system like the Mercator projection. The spatial reference system ID of the Mercator projection is actually 3857. Now, what I need to do to transform it to that spatial reference system is, uh, first of all, I need to add one column if I want to persist the result. So I'm doing an alter table my geom at and now let's call it shape 3857. And I'm saying this is of type ST geometry 3857 because that's a special reference system. Good, so I have one column more. Of course, this column is still empty. Now I need to do the actual transformation. So I'm doing update my geom set shape 3857 equals shape, which is the original geospatial column uh, with spatial reference system 4326. And now I'm using the spatial function dot st transform. And I'm saying that spatial reference system should be transformed into 3857. 
0.57. And I'm issuing that statement. Let's look at the output. You see that I now got two spatial columns. One is shape, one is shape 3857. You see that, of course, null and multipoint, the representation hasn't changed. But you see that uh, if you look at the coordinates, on the 3857 side, this is not latitude and longitude anymore, but it is the coordinate of the of the Mercator projection. If I click on that, you'll see the same geometries because they're just projected onto a plane map. Now, next thing what we can try is maybe calculate some distances. So let's maybe again go to the campus, clearing that polygon here. And now I'm choosing the location of my office. Let's see, I'm sitting in building one, approximately over here, copying over that point. And now I want to actually calculate the distances from my office location to building eight and also to the canteen. So what I'm doing for that, I say select uh, shape 3857 distance. And now I can hand over a second geometry to ST distance. Um, if I want to convert my office location to a geometry, I again can use ST geom from text. So first of all, I need to give the well-known text. And now we have to be careful because that well-known text that I got here is latitude and longitude. So it's actually 4326. I'm telling the data database to interpret that as a 4326. But as you can see, when I'm, I can just try to execute that statement, um, you'll get we we'll get an error message, right? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate the distance between a point on the plane and a point on the round Earth, which is not possible because ST distance and also other spatial functions they need to have to they need to work on the same spatial reference system. So what I need to do, I actually need to transform the point that I have here to the same spatial reference system, which in my case is three eight five seven. Hope the brackets are correct. Let's try that. They are, I'm lucky. And what you see here is the result. You see that, uh, I think this is the canteen of building 20. It's 475 meter from my office location to that canteen. And it's a bit more than one kilometer from my office location to, to building eight. So let's maybe get the shapes of the buildings itself into the result set. And what you see here that actually the ST distance function doesn't make any difference if it's a polygon or if it's a point. It just calculates the distance, right? So for the point distance, this is clear. It's just the shortest, dis shortest distance between that point and my point. Of course, only uh, considering direct distance, so it doesn't know any street network, so it's just taking the coordinates. Um, and for the polygon, it actually calculates the shortest distance between my office location and that polygon. So the shortest dis distance may be, for example, on the, beyond that corner. So it's giving me that distance as a result. That was one very simple example. Now let's get to something a little bit more sophisticated. So recently on social media, this kind of map really got popular. Um, in, that, in that case, it shows you the closest capital city across Germany. So for me, I'm uh, in that area down here. Uh, Luxembourg is closer than any other capital city in the world. How to, do you get to that graphic? Um, you can do that using one SQL statement on HANA. Um, here we have that on Git, GitHub. So I'm just copying that over to my database studio and I'm going to explain you what happens in that statement. Uh, for that, I'm using another instance because uh, the HANA trial instance is not enough to load the planet file of OpenStreetMap. I loaded that to a different uh, instance here. So I'm opening my SQL script console here, just copying over the statement that we just got from GitHub. Uh, so that statement, maybe to look at that, uh, consists of or is using two tables, which is OSM point and OSM polygon. So just to give you an idea what the data volume is, you can do a count star from the OSM point table. So there are 136 million points in there. And uh, do the same for the polygons. And around 461 million polygons. Um, good. 
so we got quite an amount, amount of data because uh, it's actually the, the open street map uh, data of all the world so not only germany um, what we have here is first an sql statement which selects the capital cities of the world so we're going to table planet osm point and we're selecting entries where the tag is like capital equals yes so tag is something which is uh, similar to json structure and there is an attribute capital which we can use to identify capital cities now we use a spatial function which is called st voronoi cell st voronoi cell calculates the voronoi cell of each input point a voronoi cell is actually the area that is closer to that point than to any other point in the result set so if we're just executing that statement we get all the Voronoi cells of the capital cities in the world. So let's give it a few seconds. And here we go, here's the result. We go to the spatial tab in Dbeaver to just look at it. Uh, maybe we zoom into Europe and here we exactly see, for example, Berlin and the red cell around it. So this is all the area which is closer to Berlin than to any other capital city. Now, the very last thing that we need to do to get to the graphic that I've just shown you is that we need to find the borders of Germany and intersect the Voronoi cells that we have here with the borders of Germany. Good. So to select the borders of Germany from that OSM polygon file, we can use that where condition. So we have boundary equals administrative and admin level equals two. So this is country borders. And the name of the country should be Deutschland, so Germany. What we will also do, because um, with OpenStreetMap, actually, uh, yeah, the, the country borders consists of thousands of points, which we don't need to just gener generate that graphic. Uh, we use the function stsimplify, um, which simplifies the polygon. So we allow the polygon to be up to 25 meters, or the, the borders of the polygon, to be up to 25 meters away from its original position but therefore we can save points to describe that border so the geometry gets simpler and you use less points but of course you lose some precision which is fine for our visualization also we're selecting only cells which actually have an intersection with the country of germany so for that we have the condition as the intersection with b cell which is the voronoi cell is empty equals zero so what that does is actually um, that if you look here, uh, for example, at the Voronoi cell of, of London, it's not taken into consideration because we're only interested in the cells which are actually intersecting with Germany. So now we're issuing that whole statement. So due to the data volume and of course, uh, due to the fact that it's not optimized, it lasts a little bit longer. But I'm going to speed that up in the video anyway. And here we have the results. So again, we go to the spatial tab and we see exactly the Voronoi cells that we have seen before. So for example, here we got um, Amsterdam. Let's click on that one. And the associated Voronoi cell, which is that one. And we only consider the intersection with the German country borders. And we see that that area over here is closer to Amsterdam than to any other capital city in the world. Thank you for watching that video. The next topic up on the list will be spatial machine learning.